Hello all, it's MySoPods and more with me. I hope everything is going well with you and you're taking care of yourself and the ones you love. It's the end of November and I'm going to, as I've said, start doing a two-part vlog at the end of the month. The first part I'm going to be going over isopod progress, things like that, showing off some videos and footage, which is what I assume most of you are here for. After that, if you are so inclined and in the mood, I'm going to be going over a more personal vlog that arguably and maybe just tangentially will have something to do with isopods. So you're not obviously required to stick around for that, but you're more than welcome to. And then I just started doing these vlogs for October, which was kind of mid or mid November when I started doing it. So the last vlog is only several weeks old, which means this one should probably be a lot shorter than that one. So just a kind of a heads up there. But with all that out of the way and nothing more to say, let's hop into the vlog. Porcelio Spinicornis, my gold-handed isopods. So I finally split these guys up into two separate colonies. They've been doing great overall, and I figured it's a good time to isolate some of the more vividly colored buddies up and move them into a new enclosure. I did do a time-lapse video of me putting that bin together. So if you want to check it out, I will try to remember to put that in the drop down section below. I think progress with these guys is going to slow down pretty significantly as now that it split, both of the colonies are a little smaller, which kind of just leads me to believe that our, the activity overall is going to kind of slow down. Eventually, I'm going to make a third enclosure for these guys one where I can kind of further start isolating smaller juveniles that are born if they exhibit certain traits. So I can try to grab them before they start breeding with the normal wild caught ones and try to isolate those colors and things like that. So more to come on these guys, but again, I think it's going to slow down, but we'll see. So Trichelopis, oof. Rathke, again, I'm not ever certain that I'm saying that correctly. I only had about five or six of these guys until just last week, which is November. I was out on a walk and tripped on a piece of wood and almost fell. And it was 40 degrees out, 40 American degrees. <laughs> so rather cool. And if I, I exposed a bunch of isopods that if I had left, they would have probably just froze. So I ran and scooped them up. With that, though... There may be Porcelio Scaber in there, as the two are visually kind of similar. So I need to make sure I kind of try to take some time and see if I can isolate those two. But with that said, while I was not planning on doing anything with these guys for a while, as I said, originally I only had five or six. Now that I have a more numerous amount of them, I'm probably going to be moving them into a larger enclosure. Similar to Spinicornis, there's not much out there that I see in terms of care guides for these guys. And I'm very curious if my observations thus far of them being similar to canyon giants or uh, giant canyon isopods is correct in the capacity that I seem to see them have more of a propensity for digging like canyons do. So we'll see if that's true. When I put that bin together, I'll make sure to record it, post it, and all that good stuff. Maybe I'll do something live. Who knows? What's up, clowns? Nothing new here. I did find something that was either a molt or maybe the leftover shell of a dead pod. But aside from that, they're eating well. They're active, munching on carrots, getting bigger. I have not flipped anything in here yet, so... Maybe that will be next, but again, I try not to disturb them, and I want to make sure if I do, it's for a good reason, not just to make a video. So I'm most likely waiting for them to 
display a little bit of breeding activity or something like that. That's one thing I have not seen them do. But yes, more to come on these guys. And I can't wait because they're just so visually attractive. Canyon Giants. Yes, they exist. I even saw one and that's really all I have to report on these guys. This is going to be interesting when I get to do their Flip It Fridays. I'm hoping to be pleasantly surprised, but I don't want to put the cart before the horse, so we'll see. Gestroy, or as I call them, Wolverine Isopods. Go Blue! What a great weekend it was in that regard. So since their Flip It Friday, I've put a little more leaf litter in there and intend to start putting more and more, just kind of slowly adding it. And I have seen them out and about a little more, which is awesome. But I wouldn't say I've seen them out in abundance. And I haven't seen any mating activity there or any, I think it's mankai or babies. So not much to report there, but it is nice to see them out and about, even if it's just a little bit more. My white zebras, as mentioned, not much here. I do want to try to add ventilation a little bit more to this one as I try to keep most of my armadillidiums on the drier side. Again, not dry, just more on the drier side when it comes to housing isopods. If I can find money after my <laughs> Christmas budget for the kiddos, this may be one of the guys I try to get a little bit more of because again, I only have four right now. And I want to try to bump those numbers up a little bit. And my zebras, who I saved for last because it has been a great week for them. My daughter and her friend spent the night, and I was just kind of showing off the zebras a little bit. And when I did, man, I saw a nice group of young, again, I think they're called Manke, or early, early young juveniles running around. And I didn't get to film it because, again, I was just kind of showing them at the time, but I would have guessed that I saw somewhere around 10, give or take several. Now, even a few days before, I had been spotting a couple, maybe several, up to four, but not that many. It's awesome. And now they're just out and about more and more. Aside from all the young, I have noticed a few that are more brownish in color and maybe chocolate, but... I'm not sure if my mind is playing tricks on me, so I need to kind of get some better light and pay a little bit more attention and maybe start isolating them. I do think with these guys in the future, I want to do what I want to call a jailbreak mix with a variety of zebras in terms of both color and patterns. So there is the regular zebras, the white zebras, the chocolate zebras, and man, if I can ever get my hands on which means I would need money <laughs> or the ability to trade for I would love to get yellow zebras then I would take all of them and make a group of it add the variety in there but also in terms of the color I want to make sure to mix up the lines as mentioned there are some with the solid patterns the dotted patterns and then what I just call Morse code because it's kind of a little bit of a mix. Let me know your thoughts on that. And I think that's about it for isopods and we can just move on to the other boring stuff. If you're on the way out, thank you for the time you spent. And please share any thoughts, comments, suggestions, things you noted, suggestions for husbandry and information. I'd love that. And if you're specifically pointing out something in the video, I always appreciate it if you can timestamp it because I'm not that smart. And if you point something out, I'm that person who will spend the entire time looking through a video trying to see what you're talking about if I don't know offhand. With all that out of the way and nothing more to say, go easy and let's hop into me. I want to try to preface these parts with why I do this. I call it externalizing. Externalizing, in my own words, is taking everything from inside of your head and putting it out there. It could be in the form of a poem, a song, a conversation, or simply saying the words out loud. It can be to oneself or with others. It can be even in the form of a blog where you simply just talk to yourself. The point is getting those thoughts out there into the ether where you and others can 
interact with them, it's important, and this is one of the ways that I practice self-awareness. But let's proceed. November for me is a mixed bag and, to be honest, generally more on the downside. I'm a veteran and the Marine Corps birthday and Veterans Day are in November. My birthday is in November along with several other family members of mine who are not with me anymore. That's all a lot for me and I try to be positive and make the best of it but it's just not always that easy. This year though it was a stellar November. The weather was perfect at least for me. There could have been a bit more snow but technically it's not winter yet so I guess I shouldn't complain and I'll be content. I got some stuff done around the apartment without totally wrecking my back and that's always good. Sometimes something like moving laundry up and down the basement to where my laundry machine is can wreck my back but sometimes it can be something trivial like unloading the dishes or folding laundry maybe picking up after the kids because those repetitious up and down movements are not good for my back or my knee or my ankle and I always have to be careful and pace myself but I want to make sure I don't use those as excuses to be lazy or not do anything it's a constant balancing act and again where self-awareness and honesty comes into play the kids are amazing nothing new to report there well there's always new stuff to report there but nothing big or crazy which they say no news is good news and maybe that's the case here obviously they're excited for Christmas and as mentioned my kiddos come over on my time off and that is as often as I can take them I'll talk more about details about custody later I don't want this to be too long but the last thing is I'm a winter guy I'm always hot I sleep with the window open in the winter and if it wasn't for stripe and my new ISO homies my apartment would be about 65 degrees right now I love walking in the snow I love just laying out in the snow more so on the days when it's so bad out that you can't drive and that's because when no one's driving it's so beautifully quiet you can hear the snow crunch beneath your feet you can hear the snow hitting your clothing specifically for me I usually wear my red hat and I can hear it hitting the brim of my hat when it's quiet enough it's just awesome be it in the winter or in the summer I call this unplugging and I just realized I'm now going to do a video on this specifically one day but I think it's important to have some place to go and unplug get away from the everyday politics people work stresses relationships plans engagements social media the internet I just go out and I always hear myself saying Let's go see what we see. Sometimes I just stare at the water for a half an hour. Sometimes I walk for over an hour. Sometimes I think I'll do the former but end up doing the latter. I've seen beavers, eagles, deer, heron, woodpeckers, kingfishers. At times I just went to take out the garbage and decided to take a walk for a bit. But unplugging always just helps me kind of find myself and I suggest you do it too and maybe more often. And that's about it for me. I hope everything's going well with you with the holidays coming up. Please be safe. Take care of yourselves. Slow down if you're a driver. I live near several high volume roads and I know it just breaks my heart when I see accidents happening at intersections during the holidays knowing people are hurt or people could be killed because people are in a hurry to go and buy a thing. And I hate that I have to say this, but I'm going to. If you really, really want to buy a thing, leave earlier so you don't put yourselves at risk or others at risk, please. 
don't run red lights. If it's snowy or icy or wet, slow down even more. The thing will be there, but you may not be. So stay safe, make good decisions, take care of yourselves, take care of the ones you love, and go easy.